We had Byron with Shinsuke Nakamura. And all of a sudden, he's interrupted by J.D. McDonough beating up Sammy. And that's when they zoomed in to show this giant, giant hematoma on his elbow or his bursa sack injury bursa or whatever. Sack. Yeah. Totally gruesome. Then we had Otis versus Kaiser. And uh, it was whatever it was. Otis uh, tosses him into the ring. He's going for the caterpillar. Vinci gets distracted. Otis goes after him. The ref goes to get rid of him. Gunther sneaks in, boots Otis. Kaiser boots him, pins him when the ref turns around. And then they beat down Otis afterwards until Chad Gable ran down to make the save. That's further hyping up that uh, Chad Gable match with, uh, with Gunther. Cody and Seth promo where they agree to get along. And, man, this was a thing where Nakamura is there with him. And, man, there was no subtlety here whatsoever. Yeah. Nakamura practically told you, I will be screwing these guys tonight. He offered to be the partner. Well, that's how I saw it. I thought it was very obvious. Oh, it made was them, very obvious. Made them made them look, especially Seth, look very naive. Oh, yeah. Seth's laughing. Ah, we replaced him. Ha, ha, ha. And he walks off. Joke was on him later. Yeah. Well, you, then we had Miz. You should you should be paying attention to your to your TV storylines. So yeah, you should. He was too busy putting on those stupid boots and that uh, that yellow pair of sunglasses to watch the television. Yeah, I think that was a problem. Miz comes out for a promo, and he's burying L.A. Knight, and L.A. Knight interrupts, and uh, and they had a they had a pretty good back and forth. Actually, I thought this was great. I thought yeah. it was some of the best back and forth verbal stuff. They both were were like Miz is always entertaining, but it's usually in a way that makes you like it's not really like it's like he's in a, he can talk really good, but he never makes me interested in like actually wanting to see him wrestle. And I can't say when this was over, I I actually wanted to see the, the match either, but it was probably as close as you're ever going to get to to watching a promo segment and wanting to see a Miz LA night match. Um, they were both really good. LA Knight, like Miz, basically, you know that, like, you know, if you strip me of, um, what do you say, of of my? He said, uh, if you strip everything away from me, my wife, my charisma, my stardom, what do you get? You get LA Knight, and yeah. the people love you now. They're gonna love you for the next nine months. But you know what five, I he think? Said five, he said five months. You're an attitude era fanboy cosplaying in the ring. And Isn't that LA what Miz Knight. is? Well, I mean. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, L.A. Knight, you know, from from day one, it was like, this guy's being The Rock, and he's being Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, and now like here we for, are. He's, he's been he's, like that for 20 years. He's totally embraced it now. He does the people's elbow and essentially a stunner as his finishing combination. But anyway, he goes, I got no problem with you, Miz, but, uh, you know, you, you've, uh, you better not make this personal. And then Miz goes nuts. He says, I've been taking this personally for 20 years now. I want to know what you've been doing for the last 20 years. And L.A. said, really, the last 20 years I've been making myself a dangerous man, been clawing, scratching, everything I could from the outside looking in, while this place bet on all the wrong horses, including you. That was a great line. He says, you know, you had a 20-year head start because you were safe. They knew they could smack you around. They knew they could kick you out of the locker room and you'd just take it. But I'm a dangerous man, and I'm not someone to be messed with. That's the difference between me and you. We actually got a light Miz chant, but then yes. the rest of the audience just shouted those people down and booed them out of the building. It was funny, and, too, when they did it, when they did it L.A. night, like he picked up on it and just goes, well, I guess I made you some fans. Because, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, there, there's that, that whole thing of, um, you, know, the, you know, the whole you got to pay your dues mentality. Um, and you know, the idea is Miz has been here forever and this guy just showed up and now he's getting a push. It's like, you know, whatever, if you're over, you're over, you know, I mean, once you're over, you don't have to, you shouldn't have to spend like 10 years paying your dues once you're already over. But you know, I mean like they're, they're obviously they're giving LA Knight the big push right now as they should. Cause he's over, he's selling merch. He's a very high merch seller right now and, um, gets big reactions and great. He's always been a great talker. So um, we'll see how long he can hang at the top. Well, Miz says, you're not on my level, and L.A. says, prove it to me. So, of course, Miz acts like he's leaving. But he jumps Knight, goes for his finish. Knight avoids it, hits him with his uh, blunt yeah, force trauma, which is his uh, stunner variation, laying him out. 
More like a headlock DDT. Yeah. Well, no, he he, he boots him in the stomach, he grabs him, and then he it's it's very much like a stunner. I mean, there's no. Uh, it is it is a it is a DDT type deal, but it's a it's a stunner ripoff, just like that uh, that that people's elbow. And we had Viking Raiders challenging anybody for tonight, and uh, it is accepted by the returning New Day. Kofi is back, and uh, Kofi was running. He was jumping. I mean, didn't seem like he had any problem whatsoever with his ankle. And they hit the uh, Trouble in Paradise, hit a big dive on Eric to the outside, and then Xavier hit the flying elbow, got the pin. And uh, it was a good comeback match, good for what it was. Shana met with Becky, said, I didn't need your help tonight or ever. If you're... uh..." And then uh, she goes, I've taken out Ronda. I've got a long list of people I'm going after. You're on the list. And Becky said, well, not hard to find. So then the main event well, was... At least, uh, at, least they're, at least they're doing something with Shane after that win. I thought yeah. that was really easy. Really I easy. was petrified she was going to lose tonight. Petrified. Oh, no, I didn't think she was going to lose to Zoe Stark too early. But but I did think that they may like forget about her in three weeks. And they still may. They still may. I thought that because they're doing the big Becky Trish match next week... And Zoe is a part of that. I thought there's at least a chance that like something's going to happen and Zoe's going to get a screw job win or something like that. But thankfully, they did not do that. So then uh, they announced Sonya was injured, and uh, that was that. Just like a quick comment there at the end of the show. And then Judgment Day versus Cody and Seth and Nakamura. So Nakamura did work the entire match all the way through to the finish. Got heat on him for a while. He got the hot tag to Seth. Seth ran wild. They got the hot tag uh, to Cody there at the end. And then uh, Priest ends up getting involved. And it bro- broke down to a six-way. Cody tries to go for the crossroads. Priest hits him with the briefcase behind the ref's back. Sammy runs down to take care of Priest. Finn gets the briefcase as the ref is distracted. Seth super kicks the briefcase into his face. Cody hits the crossroads on Finn. Poor Finn gets pinned again. Yep. And then Seth is screaming at Cody afterwards. I don't even know why. And Cody's like, dude, we won. We won this match together. And so finally, begrudgingly, Seth offers him a handshake. He goes, let's go pose. So they go up to the corners. They're both posing and everything. And Nakamura's just standing there in the corner. Just waiting and for of his course, time. Yeah, Seth for his comes time. down off the ropes. And Nakamura flies in with the Kinshasa, lays him out. And uh, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I thought when this was over that they wanted to do a tease of Cody versus Seth because you kind of have to because Cody just beat Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. But then with this here, I think this is the way to actually move to Cody versus Nakamura. You mean Seth uh, and Nakamura. Or Seth and Nakamura, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I and think then, it's, Seth and, it's Seth and Nakamura. There's a chance it turns into a three-way. Um, I just which, don't think that Cody should be fighting for this title. Unless he's going to win it and you're going to do a unification he, down the road. He, well, yeah, he could, they could do that. They could do that. Um, I think I think the best but bet then here's is... But then you know, here's the problem with that. We just did a unification, then we added another title. So it's like we're gonna we're gonna do a unification, and then six months later add another title again. Yes, I don't so think so. It so, be so like Cody will have like five belts, and then they'll give like Finn Balor a belt. I think that we should avoid another unification match here. And hey, you know what? At the uh, pay per view, Heyman didn't come out with the two belts, so they may have uh, finally just gotten it down to one, and uh, one on each show. But I think Seth and Nakamura could be for the title, and then. You know, somebody's got to jump Cody next week, whether yeah. it's, uh, you know, Joe McIntyre turning heel or whoever it might be. But I think yeah. that you've got to move Cody onto something else for the I'm time. I'm calling it down Granny's memory lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. <laughs> this yeah, is new that's... stuff. This is more up to date, you know. I'm I more... see. Okay, this is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just no, said. no, okay. no, no. <laughs> the <laughs> New Testament. Everyone, let her go. We lived on a farm ten miles east of Baker. <laughs> more <Yeah>. recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say this is a new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, we're just going to be not, quiet. And you, am I out of my you, mind? No, <laughs> yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm finding Vinny. 
Vinny, you're being fined $100. Oh! It was Martels and Hebes. Hebes? Was Martel. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. Yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes? The daughter Alice, uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what, what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> You thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? This is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.